Doctors walkout in Korea has now entered its sixth month, but the clash between the government and the physicians is showing no signs of abating. Tensions further escalated as the government rolled out new plans to fill striking junior doctors' void at major hospitals, which sparked vehement opposition, as you can imagine, from the medical community. On today's Zero Minutes segment, we get an in-depth analysis of the ongoing medical strike and the broader issue of medical reform for the country from a legal perspective. For this, we're now joined by Song se Professor of Law at Kyunghee University. Welcome back to the program, Professor Song. Thank you. Good to join you. Thank you for being here with us so early in the morning. Maybe you can first tell us about a government's expanded medical reform and its l- newest measures anyway. So in its latest review, uh, included is a requirement for an additional license to open individual practices for doctors. So currently, doctors can o- open a practice as general practitioners after graduating from medical school and then passing a national exam without undergoing extra training. Can you explain more in detail what the government proposal entails and what the legal issues are anticipated arising from this? Well, it seems like government is coming up with new ways of you know, forcing uh, doctors to think twice about either walking out or uh, taking measures against the government. Uh, I think that the the license, another license to do it, I mean, it's not without precedence. I mean, the lawyers, uh, even after getting the law, a legal license, they have to go through continuing education uh, to be able to practice. And it has some rationale because uh, changing environment, you need to keep up with the latest technology, latest knowledge, and so on and so forth. So you can look at it that way, but in the context of what we have in Korea, the keen and very contentious uh, fight between the government and doctors, I I cannot help but think that this is another overreach from the government to make uh, the doctor's life uh, pretty tough uh, and trying to uh, make them stop uh, from uh, either walking out, striking, or starting not, their own practice. Uh, that to right. Their practice, yes. Right, right. So the circumstance in which the government was forced to put out these hands is not ideal. Um, I guess that's a different point to address. Uh, maybe we can also elaborate on other government efforts to reform hospital personnel structure, too. The government is also planning to reform large university hospitals into one that centers on specialists and physician assistants or PA nurses. It aims to actually reduce a dependency on residents from the current 40% to 20 percent. Does the government have legal authority to reform hospitals at such scale? And do you foresee also potential lawsuits regarding the reform coming from resident doctors, perhaps? Well, if the government wants to, is trying to artificially limit the numbers, probably there would be uh, numerous lawsuits from different angles. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it from the the need for reform uh, perspective, I mean, this, the need for uh, reform has uh, has been a a pretty good rationale for a number of years. For, for example, Korea still operates on a very uh, kind of crooked system where we utilize and uh, utilize a cheap labor in terms of residents, mm. and forty percent of uh, uh, doctors in in the hospital uh, being filled with those cheap labor. It's it's not ideal. Mm. So from the purpose of making a, a, a specialization more intense and, uh, you know, reduce the number of people who are uh, not being utilized as educational purposes, but as a cheap labor, it's a good it's a spirit and we can give you that. But again, uh, in the context of this uh, intense contention, I, I think that even this uh, good uh, reform Uh, purpose is being used to force the doctors to return to their post essentially Right. Although both sides could agree that this all started with a need for medical reform, overworked doctors, overworked cheap labor, as you said, is probably not the ideal circumstances, especially in a live or die situation like the ERs, for example. Uh, Nursing Act is another hot button issue. Uh, as we already entered the six month of doctor strike, the Korean Medical Association says if the government and ruling camp fail to stop the legislation of the Nursing Act, it will mobilize all means to launch protests and seek to oust even the current government. 
what are the contentious points of the Nursing Act, Dr. Song, and what are your prospects for the issue? There are many points to this, okay. but I think the biggest one, uh, I cannot help but think that this is motivated by the turf mentality. Uh, uh, this kind of, uh, the nursing, nurse uh, act for uh, nurses uh, attempts has been there numerous times. Uh, in 2001, they had a bill that died in 2023. Uh, 2018, another bill that died with the closure of the 20th National Assembly, 2005, again. So what it is, is that, um, first of all, the, the nurses are kind of subservient to the the, the, the doctors, if you look at the bill uh, from the, the Japanese occupation era. And our society is changing. Uh, there are more aging populations. So uh, there is a good rationale for the nurses to expand their uh, reach and the area they can influence. But of course, doctors would see that as kind of an increase of the competition. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that this turf, turf mentality has been kind of a culprit where all those uh, numerous bills have been uh, introduced and died or defeated. Uh, meanwhile, head of the Korean Intern Resident Association, Park Dan, was questioned by police on Wednesday as a witness in a criminal case related to the junior doctor's collective walkout. Uh, what is he accused of exactly, and how do you foresee the case playing out here on 4th? Well, the organization he is in, Korean Intern and Resident Association, uh, is a professional association and is not uh, recognized as a labor union. And only labor union can... Uh, exercise uh, collective bargaining and and, and uh, strike and all those. So uh, he's accused of uh, being in, engaged in, in activities that only their labor union can do. Yeah. So that's why his defense is that, well, it's not me. It's a voluntary action from the doctors to resign or do something else. Mm -hmm. So it's it sounds like a technicality, but for labor union... Uh, it's important uh, the section to uh, uh, defend, and for for Pak, uh, Mr. Park Dan is, is an individual. Probably his legal defense is that you know he his freedom of expression has been interpreted as a activity of labor union. And also, it seems that there's been increasing stigma attached to any doctors who want to return to work with pressure coming from the government. Uh, and now we're dealing with the so-called returning doctor blacklist, if you will. And the government has vowed to take stern measures against any illegal activities that obstruct striking junior doctors from returning to hospitals, including but probably not limited to just a blacklist. What potential penalties could be imposed on those who do, in fact, obstruct doctors return to work? I, I guess the, the government will look to the the, the, the Medical Act, uh, Article 58, where the government retains the power to order doctors and the medical institutions to back to work. However, this has been always a pretty uh, nuanced uh, provision. Okay. I mean, we can understand if it's an emergency situation, pandemics and all those, probably it, it is a good idea to have the control tower at the at the government and have some coercive power uh, for the sake of public uh, health. But uh, this time around, I don't think that rationale is fully there. So even if the government can uh, uh, insist that they have the power, probably there will be some uh, constitutional challenges for this. And again, it seems like this is another tactic that government is trying to force the doctors to go back to work mm -hmm and listen to what the uh, government is uh, trying to uh, impose. So um, if the government insists on, keep on fighting this, I, I think there will be some legal challenges on this. Professor Song, uh, the more I talk to you, the more I realize why this has been a stalemate for six months, and I don't see a solution in our conversation, not even close. Right. It has to be a political solution in the end. All right. Which brings us to our final question. Then what about the legal punishments for striking junior doctors? Uh, can you give us the latest developments in regards to that? Well, uh, junior doctors, I, th I think that they kind of uh, fold into the same kind of logic. Um, they, they are saying that they resigned from the hospital. But the government is, again, using the same uh, uh, section of the the 
the medical act and saying that we order you to come back. Mm. Uh, but they're saying that, well, I resigned and we have the, the freedom of choosing our uh, the, the profession and, right. and, and, and the freedom of being where we want to be. So I, I think it's from a slightly different angle, it's, it's going to be another uh, constitutional uh, challenge they, they can uh, mount. All right. The only thing I foresee is a much more long, dragged out process. In the meantime, the medical vacuum continues. So of course, concerns remain about that, too. But I, I guess that's not a really good place to end an interview for me, Professor Song. But I, I believe that you don't have all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But thank you very much for your insights. Appreciate it, as always. My pleasure. Thank you. We spoke to Professor Song se this morning, Professor of Law at Kyunghee University. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.